Interpreter Standard API, or STD API, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're going to be going over um, the extension standard API. So we've already gone over the core commands for Meterpreter. We're now gonna get into the extensions. Now, most people don't think of standard API as an extension, but it is. Um, it's get, it gets loaded every single time uh, Metasploit does, um, so it doesn't really seem that there's a difference, but um, standard API is, is an extension. So the first set of commands that standard API has are file system commands. So the first couple is cat, cd, download. Um, those a lot of people have already um, used or know. Cat actually cats the file to a screen. So if you do that, what it's doing is actually pulling the file from the remote system over and then displaying it on the screen. Um, not, not GUI supported. This is like normal cat for Linux. So then cd, change directory, download. Now download and upload, both of these, um, and I'll go into upload as we get further down, but both of these actually support UNC pass. So if you're actually doing a share, you, you can download from WAC, WAC, IP, or computer name as long as um, whatever um, process that interpreter session is running on can access that share. So that's one of the cool things that little known um, nuggets that not very many people know about the download stuff, but you can download local files as well. So if you try and download the SAM file or whatever, you can try with that. So edit is another interesting one. You can actually edit files. What it does is pulls the file down to you, opens it up in VI or Nano, whichever you have set up as your local editor. You, as soon as you finish editing the file, it actually pushes it back. So it sort of um, concatenates the, uh, the commands of download, then edit it in your editor, and then re-uploading to the same directory. So you don't have to do that. Git LWD is your local working address. That's the local system where your Metasploit's running this. Git um, working directory for a remote host, LCD, LPWD, that's a lot the same thing like local CD, local um, PWD. LS, list of files, MKDIR, make directory. These are all really straightforward stuff, PWD, RM, RMDIR. Now, search is a little different. Search actually has two interesting features. So search allows you to search on the remote system, wherever the interpreter session is there, um, for interesting files. But if the search indexing is turned on, like in Windows 7 and above, this will actually go really fast. It'll search all of the stuff in the index first and then continue on from there. So you have uh, the ability to do Windows searching directly from interpreter. Then we get into the networking commands. So ARP, get proxy, ARP will actually show the host ARP cache, so um, whereas the ARP scan does a bunch of ARP requests to find out the local um, broadcast, you can actually look at the ARP cache right off the bat by typing ARP. Git proxy shows you the proxy settings for whatever user your interpreter session is, is running as on that box. Um, so if you're running a system, most likely Git proxy is going to show you nothing. Um, but if you're running as a uh, a user, you might have actual proxy settings. If config, IP config, same thing. Netstat, really useful command. If you don't run Netstat on, uh, on um, interpreter sessions, you should. Shows you where all the connections are going and coming from, what's listening. And then port forward. We've talked a bit about port forward in, the, in some of the pivoting stuff. Basically, it's allowing you to forward a local port over through the interpreter session into the remote network. So if you wanted to RDP to server one and you're on victim one, you could port forward 3389 on your Linux host over to that IP, whatever server one is on 3389, then RDP to yourself and you get RDP to the remote host. Route, we've already talked about routing for inside of Metasploit where everything inside of Metasploit is routed through whatever uh, route you set up. So if you set up 0 .0 .0, um, so that everything goes through interpreter session one, um, that's how it'll go. Then we have system commands. Um, 
clear EV. You can clear all of the event logs, which is a good command if you want to kind of um, clean up after yourself, drop token, relinquishes any impersonation that you have. Same with rev, rev to self actually works. Um, execute, we've talked about execute in the past. Get env, this um, t shows you the environmental variables. This can actually be really useful, especially if you're looking at path. If you're looking to privilege escalate, um, get env can show you the path variable. And sometimes that path variable has information at the very beginning of it where you can do DLL injection or other escalation methods with that. So get PID, current process, get privs. This is a list of the um, Windows um, permissions that you have. Uh, get UID, uh, what user are you? Kill, PS, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Reboot, this is a fun one. Uh, reboots the system right off the bat. Um, reg does registry changes or queries. So you can actually query a bunch of different registry things or set values, which is great. It does have some limitations, um, especially if you're running um, reg in a 32 process on a 64-bit on uh, architecture. So if you're not seeing registry keys, that might be why. And it also doesn't have the ability in the interface for MSF console or interpreter interface to do some specific different types of registry keys. So if you're not doing a straight string, um, you do have um, a little less flexibility than you would with a script. So then we have rev to self, reverting back to whatever um, your current uh, real user ID is or token is. Shell drops to a shell, shut down, shuts down the system. Steal token. So um, with this, you're actually stealing the token of a target process. So um, without loading the incognito um, extension, which we'll talk about later in our, in our next episode with um, extensions, um, you can actually steal just one of the tokens right out of that without having to load anything else. So suspend, you can suspend or resume a process or a list of processes, which is great. And then system information. That just basically tells you the system information for your mature session as well as the system you're on. User interface stuff. So getting into even more fun stuff, Enum desktops. Enum desktops is interesting because Windows actually has more than one desktop that you see. It's not the actual your, where your icons are in, in a sense. Your desktops are, are that uh, window manager desktop, the thing that you see um, all of it instead of just your, your icon area. So it actually has more than one desktop at all times. So the um, session zero um, or, or desktop zero is usually the system processes where everything's running in system. And then you have um, concurrent different IDs for different desktops. And if you use Noom desktops, you can actually find out what other um, virtual desktops or, or fake desktops there are out there. And then get desktop tells you which desktop your interpreter session is on. Idle time tells you the current idle time of the user that your process is owned by. So if, if you do an idle time and you're running a system, most likely that idle time is going to be pretty long because system normally doesn't do any mouse movements. <laughs> um, but um, if you're in explorer.exe, you'll get the good idle time for that current user. Key scan dump, start and stop. This is actually the, the in-memory key logger that Meterpreter has in the standard API. Again, all of this is built into the extension that gets loaded every single time. So you can actually do key, key scan start, just let it run, and then later on do key scan dump, it'll pull all the stuff out, and then finally key scan stop. Now, word of warning, a couple things. First, um, key scan um, start, stop, and dump they don't actually give you anything unless you ask. So you have to dump the results. So if you lose that interpreter session and you didn't key scan dump, kind of out, out of luck. Um, screenshot obviously gives you the screenshot. Set desktop, you can actually switch desktops for whatever um, session you have. Just like your enum desktop and git desktop allows you to show what you have and where you're going. And then UI control. This is a fun one. You actually get to control if the keyboard or mouse work for whatever user your process is in. So if you're an explorer.exe for Daring Kitchen and you turn UI control keyboard stop and, and mouse stop, his mouse and keyboard no longer work. He can't do anything. He actually has to reboot the machine until this thing comes back or figure out a way to log off. Then we have finally the webcam commands. Now, 
You want to do webcam list every single time just to see if your mature for session is in a, uh, uh, a Windows box that has a webcam, but you can do a, a lot of fun stuff. Um, you can do snap, which gets you a snap. You can also do stream, which actually sets up a, uh, a web, well, web no, I don't say web 2.0, but it's a, uh, ah, I forget the commit name, but it's basically a um, web RTC streaming um, uh, webcam shot of the user. So <laughs> you get a full HD video of, of whatever user going in. Now you do have um, some very specific things to get set up there, like uh, up-to-date version of whatever browser, like it has to be Chrome or Firefox that has to be on the remote host. But that can work really well, it's really fun. Then even a webcam chat where you can actually chat with your victim and have two-way streaming video. And then record mic, obviously that you record the microphone on the Windows box for however long you want. And that really is it for all of the standard API commands that you get just by loading up Meterpreter. You get all of this functionality there at your fingertips without having any other extensions loaded. So what do you think? Hit me up at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Thanks again for supporting the show, and if you want to support us even more, you can go to hakshop.com, enter coupon code MUVIX, and get free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until next time, I'm MUVIX, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Um.